This weekly news flash is sponsored by Creative Marketing, Making a Difference. For more information, please visit creativemarketing.net. Genworth Financial Incorporated announced late last week it is exiting the variable annuities market. The insurer said it will discontinue sales of retail and group variable annuities, and it will also halt sales of its linked benefit product. The linked benefit product is an annuity product with long-term care features. Current annuity contract holders will not be affected by the move, the company said. Genworth is discontinuing sales of annuities as part of a strategy to focus on the markets and consumers where it has strengths, according to a statement from Chief Executive Michael D. Frazier. Genworth will continue to offer fixed annuities, other life insurance, long-term care insurance, and wealth management services. Currently, Genworth is ranked 25th out of 37 insurers for new variable annuity sales, according to Morningstar Incorporated. The company was ranked 20th in 2009. The majority of Americans realize that long-term care planning is important, but many have not acted on this knowledge, according to a new study from Lincoln Financial. 65% of respondents said they understand that long-term care planning is an important, cost-saving action. However, just 44% said they had taken specific steps to prepare for unanticipated costs. Many Americans mistakenly believe that investments in programs such as Social Security and Medicare will help cover the cost of long-term care and other unexpected expenses, the study said. While the average U.S. family's savings is $120,000, just one year in a nursing home can cost $60,000, portions of which are not covered by social programs. The study also found that those who help care for an elderly loved one are more aware of the risks, with 93% of such caregivers relying on their own income to help pay for care, and 72% providing care in the loved one's home. Although the number of health savings accounts and health reimbursement arrangements rose last year, the average individual balance was down, according to a report released Tuesday by the Employee Benefit Research Institute, or EBRI. The number of HSAs and HRAs climbed to 5.7 million in 2010, from 1.2 million in 2006, while assets left from $835.4 million in 2006 to $7.7 billion in 2010, the report said. However, the average account balance decreased from $1,419 in 2009 to $1,355 in 2010. Overall, men held average balances of $1,525, while women's balances averaged $1,321. Those between the ages of 55 and 64 held average balances of $1,791, while younger respondents' account balances were between $1,250 and $1,400. Meanwhile, minorities' account balances averaged $1,531, while whites averaged $1,387. Account balances also rose with household income. Among individuals with less than $50,000 in household income, the average account balance was $1,166. Among individuals with household incomes between $50,000 and $99,999, balances averaged $1,303 and the average balance was $1,742 for those with $100,000 or more. Although the average individual rollover amount declined in 2010, total assets rolled over increased. In 2010, $4.2 billion was rolled over, up from $4 billion in 2009. The average individual rollover rose to $1,295 from $592 in 2006, but declined to $1,029 in 2010, the report said. Last year saw the best performance by the insurance industry since the beginning of the financial crisis, according to Robert Hartwig, president of the Insurance Information Institute, or III. Although final results are still trickling in, Hartwig said the industry experienced notable gains last year. Quote, the industry is on the mend, he said. While insurers have yet to return to pre-crisis results, the industry is performing far better than 2008, when PNC income barely broke the $3 billion mark. For the first three quarters of 2010, the industry experienced a profit of $26.7 billion, Hartwig said. Profit was $28.3 billion for all of 2009. He attributed some of the positive results to premium growth, which occurred in the previous two years and is expected to continue this year. He added, quote, 
We should not expect that the current issues in the municipal bond market will in any way impair insurers' ability to pay claims in 2011. As is generally the case, it is not financial crises or ca catastrophe losses that tend to cause problems among insurers. It is issues related to deficient loss reserves and inadequate pricing." Unquote. Insurers experienced record capital and capacity worldwide in 2010 and are well positioned to deal with catastrophe losses should they occur, Hartwig said. For more on the industry, visit ProducersWeb.com.